So finally we recorded with Thayya also, mixed it, mastered it. Then about a few days after that, Coco and I spoke and said, we hate it, we just can't do Thayya. So we called Amitabh Bhattacharya, who is a genius. So, and this always happens when you call Amitabh Bhattacharya to come write lyrics, if it's, you know, later, why didn't you call him before? Why didn't you call him before? Why didn't you call him? Why did we even think of anyone? Hi, this is Mohan. And this is Coco. We are Ragni and you are watching us on Midday.com. As cliche as it can sound, but these guys genuinely need no introduction. They've been in the industry for so long. Actually grown up listening to them. They are legends. And we are lucky that they are sitting with us at Midday office today. Thank you for joining us today, Mohan. Mohan, I should call Mohan sir and Coco sir. Mohan is good, please. No, no, Mohan and Coco is fine. First of all, congratulations on your latest track, Malla. Tell us all about it, you know, firstly I would want to know how did this collaboration happen between, uh, you know, Cred and Mo, uh, Mohan, everything, how did all of it get together? This song actually, Coco started composing it long ago, many many years ago, I don't even remember when, maybe 2013-14. Uh, so he had this idea and uh, at that time he had used a dummy word uh, called Sanya. Yeah, you know that, right? Yeah. So, wo ajeeb sahi tha and uh, it, he didn't like the word, in fact he liked it the least. And even we didn't, but it was a dummy word, so kuch tha, so we used no, to... I, I actually, let me rephrase it, I hated it, <laughs> I hated that <laughs> word. Uh, but we, we created something out of it, we, uh, we created kya, matlab it was this composition, so I wrote some random other dummy lyrics, so we used to jam to it. And then when I finally, two years or three years ago, we decided to record it, and no lyricist could get out of the word sahiya. No matter what they would write, was sahiya nahi nikal raha tha, dimaag se. So finally we recorded it with Thayya also, mixed it, mastered it, then about a few days after that Coco and I spoke and said we hate it, we just can't do Sanya. So we called Amitabh Bhattacharya who is a genius. So, and this always happens when you call Amitabh Bhattacharya to come write lyrics, if it's, you know, later, then why didn't you call him first? Why didn't you call him first? Why did we even think of anyone? So, so then anyway, he came and he changed that Sanya to Malla and that's how that song got done. A few months after that, we didn't record it then, uh, we were going to, but a few months after that, Salim called, uh, Salim Merchant. Yeah. And he said, yeah, I have a, uh, we, are, we are starting a property called Soundcheck, would you guys be interested? And Coco and I like know him for years, so we, we just said yes. So, that's it and then uh, Cred came on board right after that, when, when Soundcheck was done, so that was through Merchant Records only. And I've always been a fan of some of their Cred ads, especially the popular you know, yeah. very cool, <laughs> I love those. So, so those was very glad that they were part of it, and they shot it beautifully. It was great fun. Yeah, when uh, Salim also is a musician, we admire. You know? So it becomes easier to work with people when you have a lot of admiration for them, like Amitabh Bhattacharya, uh, Salim, and his entire team is like that. They're all musicians. Whether they're actually doing video or doing the label work, but they're all musicians, and they do that also. So it's great fun. So finally, we yeah, ended up and finishing. basically there was no uh, there was no discussion as such in terms of, you know, logistics, commercials, this, that and the other. We first just said yes, yeah. because it was Salim, okay. you know. Yeah, he's the kind of guy, I mean, I've, I've sort of called him in the middle of the night after listening to Mola, uh, Mere Leli, Meri Jaan. Yeah. At two o'clock in the morning, you know, very emotional and calling him, I said, man, what a song you made. So, that's the kind of relationship that we've had over the years. So, when he he came to us and said that I'm doing this. I said, there's no question. I mean, we just said yes. There's all the later, uh, you know, the logistics and the commercials and all that got discussed af way after we we had already said yes. So we said yes. We got into yeah. recording, finished the song. Song with any. Yeah. Ha, ab kya karna? Ha. Take a video shoot. Chal. So it was like that. Good fun. Well, it's a huge collaboration, you know. Salim Merchant, Amitabh Bhattacharya. They are also big names in the industry coming together with you guys. It's, it's, it's a huge project is what it seems like but you know when it comes about your songs you guys have been in the industry like I said for so long like how does it work like you know do you feel that there's a change in the industry from where you come and to what it is now do you feel what what are the differences that you see I think uh, independent music as such is uh, is on the rise again I think it's a cyclic uh, cyclic uh, kind of a thing you know, there was a time when uh, everything that was, uh, let's say, film-based was always uh, uh, now with, you know, uh, OTT platforms and, you know, series happening and 
you know it's no more hero centric you know also uh, which has given rise to even the uh, the way people have started consuming music you know they are not listening only to what is mainstream or pop music as you might call it you know i am abstaining from using the word bollywood but there it is so uh, it's not just i'm not taking away from bollywood i i listen to bollywood as well and i like some of the songs because there are brilliant music directors in that line in that field uh, including mohan now he's also doing a, a film by himself but uh, there uh, not taking away from that but now there is uh, the audience is now uh, interested in listening to other stuff which is and uh, that's why you know the band culture is again coming back uh we've been around for a long time as you said and we're going to be around forever so but uh, it's something which uh, it's it's here to stay you know so and also the genre of music that we make it's it's uh, it comes under the classic rock uh, category and uh, as salim was putting it the other day in in an interview he said that you know it's been done for the last 50 years and it will continue being used for the next 50 years and it never gets dated that sound in yeah. you know, the sound of uh, the guitar the drums you know uh, the bass you know that band format that never gets dated so i i guess that's how it is now when you know when you talk about indie music or independent artists like uh, mid did a series on independent musicians nice. it's named indie insider mm -hmm. and we just got over like for the first season of 10 episodes of you know the latest of the the newest newcomers of the indie uh, industry indie music industry if you nice. if you call it but you know given you guys are there for instance if a person like why you is there then mm -hmm. a lot of other people it has been there for so long but do you think the idea of the this if you call it like a trend that this indie music is coming more it has been there Yeah. but you know people are looking forward to it more now do you think there's a change in generation people like there are a lot more concerts happening in those lines so, so what do you have to say on that some part of it is also covid related so i think after lockdown people were so deprived of everything that after lockdown people went bazaar kya so in fact for example agni uh, as a band before lockdown what uh, the lockdown was 2021 so or 2020 uh, and uh, whatever it was So before that, we were already around for some twelve, thirteen years, and we have probably played three club gigs. Ah, uh, because basically it's difficult for a club to get into that yeah. that scale for uh, for uh, rock band and stuff. But after this, clubs went berserk, and we say, how are they suddenly able to, you know, say, okay, let's let's invest this kind of money and do this because everyone wants to go out. So that's one thing. The the live event side, everyone wants to go out and experience the live yeah. thing. Be be with be around people. That's one. The second. thing is there are a lot of artists who and this this is not necessarily covid related but a lot of artists who uh, have created a name for themselves um, uh, people like pratik kumar people like local train people like a lot of these these new guys have uh, started releasing music which people are latching on to uh, i personally don't agree with a lot of their music but it, i love the fact that you know these guys are able to command that kind of respect or that kind of listenership that i love and i admire them for it so it's it's a it's a great uh, thing to do plus films are moving further towards yeah. abhi kon lip sync karega guys are not going to be standing and running around trees and singing songs so uh, you're getting more and more situational songs montage kind of songs so the the charm of a uh, of a hero like you know amitabh bachchan or like salman khan lip singing a song in front of you is reducing more and more exactly. so which is why i think music uh, is is in that and like he said it's cyclical wo aati rahega this uh, few genres will will take some some hip hop will come for a bit then it will go then it will come back so all of these genres will be the same but uh, we are just very glad that we are, we were around then we are around now we're going to be around for the next 20 years and we'll watch it at that point but <laughs> typically the in, in independent music uh, listening audience uh, they have uh, they have this one thing that they actually fetch out your music even if it's not plastered all over media and social media and all of that you know uh, maybe the number of views don't go into billions but uh, those 2 uh, million or 3 million views are uh, they are very hardcore and they are very uh, uh, they are very connected with your music yeah. 
so and which shows every time we go to some of the remotest places in the country to play and it's it's what now 16 years 17 years i'm always amazed at the fact that the crowd is singing the song our song lyric word for word yeah you know and i'm say how the hell are they how do they know we are in assam or we are in some you know remote place which is that place we went to uh, half long i had half never long. even heard of the place and those guys were actually singing each each song word to word and not just one song it's not just ahate they were singing sadore they were singing chantana kabira. kabira all of the songs and i was like how is this happening it took us uh, two days to reach there yeah and it's scary <laughs> yeah. because if i forget any so, lines i'm like koi to marega yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very cool i love that pressure that we have very nice Yeah, I remember. Like, I've been listening to music uh, produced by you guys for quite some time. I never imagined that I'd be sitting like this and talking to you guys at this point of time in my life. But you know, uh, remember this uh, movie, Wake Up, Sid? Yeah. So, uh, there's a sequence in the movie where Ranbir Kapoor is meeting his friends in a club after a very long time, and the song is played, "Sham Tanha." Yeah. That for me, because I was very young at that point, I was like, okay, this song is something I really like, and that's still there in my playlist, and I listen to it every day. So those, like we mentioned, not just Ahate, but sh- songs like Sham Tanha and lot more songs. So you know, given that, uh, like, like again, if we uh, talk about it, the new generation and you guys being legends yourself, do you feel uh, that? uh given the way the world is growing given the way people are coming forward on social media that is a big boom big boost to you know the careeristic approach uh, an artist can have like for instance you guys have been there for so long you guys have actually given music for a show you guys introduced into indie music long back and you know given out songs like i mentioned wake up sid me the song was played right so with with that and the difference we see now there is a difference is what i feel so like it is huge right yeah. do you think that would have benefited it would have been like that you know long See, i'll back. tell you we've been given a lot of flack from a lot of people for not doing all these things social, social media, media yeah. youtube channel i uh, i don't know both of us have been sort of uh, not very active about it yeah. but uh, you know it's not too late let's <laughs> let's buckle up and do it <laughs> yeah each of these things that happen please is just telling me this part mujhe thoda sa kar le do my but the thing is uh, each of these things have these are media these are uh, ways to consume music and to reach out to your listeners right earlier uh, there was a pride of ownership where i had a cassette and someone else had to actually take my cassette and yeah. copy it otherwise they couldn't listen to it uh, or a cd or any of these physical formats and then it became digital even digital once it became digital it took a while for all these platforms to actually take over and at each point of time it's purely about access to music now the pride of ownership is not there now someone is not going to come and say i have this cd or this lp lps are still coming back yeah. and it's become one of those collectors items kind of thing uh, but it's just a mode and we need to and he's right we need to be aware of uh, of the ways we can reach out to our audience it has definitely helped a lot of people there's so many people who have Uh, who were, would never have been known without social media never for the life of me i still haven't understood how that instagram interface works so <laughs> my wife actually handles my instagram okay uh, she's got my instagram on her phone and yeah. she does she puts up the posts i just keep say she asks me okay what do you want to say i'm putting up this post so then i put up or she asks me this guy said this do you want to reply so i'll tell her what so the time she doesn't ask him also she just puts <laughs> <laughs> and she's damn good at it. Yeah. But so we, we don't know how to do it and uh, we're not very good at it. So our job is to have people around us who can do it for us. But in terms of what we know that thankfully as musicians our main job is to know how to make music. And if we're able to do that well then it's smart for us to have people around us who can help us with the other things that we can't do. Um uh, there are so many guys who are so good at both. some guys who are very good at social media and not very good at their actual craft which is music but they're still working and which is great i i, I really uh, uh, admired people who are able to understand okay this is my platform i know how to maximize it and because of this i can you know make a living for myself and a very very good living in that and become famous it's 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 very good learning here. um when we were growing up our only way of becoming better or but uh, let's even say more famous or better known yeah. the only way was to better your music no or koi option nahi tha so you used to say okay let's make it make our song better that's the only thing that we thought of 
we didn't think of things like no no man we didn't push this on instagram these reels have those agendas were not there yeah. it wasn't there uh, our the metrics weren't there yeah. so we didn't have a way of calculating anything except for number of records sold or number of people coming up to your shows or the amount that people are willing to pay you to go and perform here the metrics are very different youtube views are different youtube likes are different instagram reels are different um, and while it's great fun at the end of the day it's still going to be about what your core competence is if our core competence is good music then all we need to do is get someone who can push it as well but someone else needs to do that we can't don't expect it from us yeah, if, <laughs> if you know anyone who can help you can help us let us know that's that's very much it but we'll be happy to it's not as if we don't feel happy when people post reels and say things about us we're very happy to see it it's just that we can't be bothered to do anything about it that's all we're lazy so so there's nothing good about it we we like to think that we are cool and all that we don't like to do instead we just kuch nahi hai we just lazy we don't know how to do it. uh someone else will do it for us hopefully and uh, i mean we'll we'll have a team which will do it we come with a lot of releases now so So we have to buckle up a little bit. Like that's the different side. Like for now, like you mentioned, the idea of producing a music or coming out with a song, the platform is social media. People are pro- like, for instance, an, a person like Anu Jain, sure. he has come out with his music on an Instagram live or like an Instagram story or somebody on YouTube. YouTube has been there for a very long yeah. time, but the way people are using it now, it's extremely different from what we were doing bef- before, right? Yeah. So that is a huge difference. And I think you guys are already coming from a place where you guys knew. to make your work work without social media as a platform or a strategy like you know this is what it is and i have to make sure that i put things there but that's there right yeah. but you know coming when it comes to gigs right are you guys coming out with more gigs are you guys coming out with more concerts happening in time lots so? lots of uh, we've got bookings till uh, january next year now i mean there are confirmed gigs I know because I've been wanting to take a holiday and I can't because between the 22nd and the 28th there's there are two gigs already in December so I can't go anywhere you know that the kind of Christmas thing party. I'm not complaining yeah. but uh, yeah He'd shows rather be on stage any day of his life and <laughs> all of us we would rather be on stage than you no shows are happening and uh, uh, you know that's that's actually the the best part of our you know it's the is the biggest payoff for us is going and playing a show I mean you know as agni we we are now 16 or 17 years old and uh, uh, as a musician i've been doing this for 35 years mm-hmm. and uh, i still feel as excited about going to a gig as as much as i did when i was probably 16 and 17 when i started so that excitement never goes away you know that's the best part of our jobs so yeah so uh, it's uh, something that we always look forward to uh of course we can't commit to you know things like holidays or foreign foreign trips and st- stuff like that because you never know you might get a gig and we are always hoping that one uh, a gig falls on one of our birthdays we love being on stage on our birthday yeah. you know oh, yeah. so <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. happening most of the time yeah. Yeah. close to our birthdays we'll have some gig yeah so we'll like chalo ye bhi ek celebration ho gaya good fun when you talk about birthdays you know coming to uh, like agni as a band when it was formulated right do you guys celebrate that like you know okay this is the day we actually came together yes, yes, how do you what do. do you guys do last year we played a tour we did a bombay bombay pune uh, so our anniversary is 15th of may yeah. so we don't really remember exactly the date that he and i decided to form the band it was somewhere around 15th of may 2005 when he had called me then i quit my job he didn't know i quit my job so that's one benchmark date that we have and strangely enough so i quit my job on 15th of may 2005 2007 15th of may we launched our first album it was very weird exactly 2 years to the date so we take 15th of may, may as 2007 as our uh, as a birthday you know yeah. agni's birthday yeah first album got launched so we do every year we do something or the other last uh, last year was uh, uh, with the you know we did this tour This year we didn't do much specifically for that time because we knew Malla was going to come out a little later, so we said let's keep it for that and then do a blitz. So from now on, leading up to the next May 15th, we'll have we have a lot of plans. We we're trying to do how much can I say? We're trying to do a collector's item kind of thing, um, a bunch of things which is which showcases all the work that we've done so far and the work that we'll end up doing from now till May because uh, we've been we've actually held back with our releases for a while. We wanted to have Uh, to start and then not stop so we started with malla now so this month uh, we release all our uh, you know uh, back catalog which is our hti and all that which is not available on 
uh, the original versions are not available some covers are so we're going to put out all our original versions everywhere uh, then our new songs start coming out so by the time it's may next year we would have at least another 15 songs out that's a lot of work for you guys like within a year and then a lot of it is already done yeah, yeah some of it is already sure. mixed and mastered yeah. i mean it's yeah correct we love our music so much we keep it safe jee mot but anything so no but we we wanted to release strategically a little bit and make sure that you know we once we are releasing we don't stop so that will happen till may 15 then off camera i can tell you a couple of other things but as of now it's too early to commit to that uh, things are in the works and it's great fun both kuch kuch uh, things that we we are very excited about are, are going to happen between now and may 15 and may 15 that will get launched so so that's fingers crossed that should all work um yeah lots of music pretty much that is it whichever way it is through films through one label through 10 labels but lots of it is coming out and we sort of lined it up oh that that's really exciting see after 17 years you're saying that you guys have been together for so long yeah. i am looking at 25 years then maybe 30 years you know that's the that's it's being around forever. for long yeah, you know when when it's 17 years it's like, like, like uh, why why are people saying it's so long 17 years is nothing is <laughs> That's when it all starts really cooking. That's what I feel. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us at Midday. Thank you so much. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.